CatRackCoach.com, the best of Cataract Coach course from the ASRS in Boston 2024. All right, case one. The posterior capsule splits wide open, so watch carefully. This is a routine case that I'm doing. You can see not very dense cataract, a lot of posterior subcapsular cataract. I'm operating, it's not a resident. So all the videos today are gonna to be a little bit sped up so we can get through everything fast, but it's a routine case. I wanna show you, I got a nice rexus done. Really, that's not the issue here. Got good draping, the eye's pretty good primary position. I'm gonna get the nucleus up out of the bag. You can see that's like Beverly Hills style, it's not too dense. This can be emulsified very easily. That's not the hard part. That's why we're going really fast through this part. The issue here is gonna be in cortex removal. And I find now that, you know, after tens of thousands of cases, that's usually the issue. So watch carefully, let me slow down the video here. I wanna clean up the capsule, get the cortex. Now there's a little smutsy stuff, some little fibers down there on the posterior capsule. So let me just kind of vacuum those right there. Uh, almost. A little bit more on the other side. Polymer tip here, nice soft tip. Maybe if I go from this direction, I can just get it right there. There we go, now I feel better. Wow. Now I feel really good. That's a really clear posterior capsule. I know, but they had that little that <laughs> thing right there. I had to, I couldn't I'm leave saying, it. Now that you moved it out of the way, it's really clear. You took care of the issue. <laughs> but that, you wouldn't have gotten that little piece? No. What? No. Oh, oh, well. Yeah, yeah. No, I was waving to you. You have to get it. You I have would to have get got, that yeah, thing. Yeah, but there is visco. Okay, so what's your next move? <laughs> Blame the scrub tech, the nurse, and the anesthesiologist. It will be fine. Just plow ahead. Pull the eye probe out of the eye. Evaluate. Keep the eye probe in the eye. Put this glass. What are you going to do here, and why? Oh, D. Okay, but why? Because if you do, well, you could blame somebody else, but. If you pull the IA probe out of the eye, you'll get vitreous coming forward. So you want to maintain pressure in the air. Right. Atmosphere. If you do that, you're going to have shallowing of the AC, AC pressure goes to zero, vitreous comes forward, and it's a hot mess. So you wouldn't just plow ahead, I guess. No. So is there a type of viscoelastic you prefer in this case, a dispersive, a cohesive? Does it matter? Or just take whatever's in the tray? What are you going to do here? Dispersive. Because you want to compartmentalize. So keep the vitreous back and then figure out what you're gonna do next. But yeah, definitely do not pull out of the eye. So as you inject the viscoelastic, do you come like off your paddle then take the infusion off too? Because how do you prevent yourself from washing out the viscoelastic? Exactly, and this is a super important thing that you need to practice before you have a PC rupture. So when you're, like, when you're about to put the IOL in, I do it at that time. When I finish the cortex removal, I practice putting the viscoelastic in and, and uh, decreasing the irrigation and then you fill up the bag and you come out. So this way you practice with your left uh, hand yeah, yeah, sure. and you're one step ahead. So, so, you, so position one of the pellet going to zero while you inject. Yep. All right, cool. So let's show you what I did here. I listened to your advice. So here comes the dispersive viscoelastic. I'll start to inject it. And if you just stay on position one, what's going to happen is you'll just wash it out. So I'll now come to position zero, keep injecting, keep injecting, and then I'm coming out of the eye. And now I'm pretty happy. So now I'm like, well, at least the patient's not going to need a YAD capsule out of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to think of something good. Well, okay. More viscoelastic going in. I'm kind of just like buying time here. Like, I don't know what to do now. Now, patient is, capsule's open. Do I need a vitrectomy here? Yes, because the poster capsule's open. Yes, because vitreous already prolapsed. No, just use Wexel and scissors. No, the anterior hyaloid face intact. The, the anterior hyaloid face looked intact. Well, how do you know? Doing that. You don't know until you check the wound for vitreous, so I'd use a wax cell and check the incision for vitreous, but I wouldn't go in and touch anything unless I knew vitreous was coming forward. Got it. How so, about you, DP? Yeah, yeah, you did a fantastic job of keeping the, the eye pressurized. Vitreous did not come forward, you did not let it, and so you don't need an anterior vitrectomy. But how do I know? Like, I can't put triamcinolone in now, right? Correct. Because I have all the viscoelastic, it won't work. Correct. Yeah, I would just put the lens in. And then what if the pupils peaked? Then deal with it later. Then do the vitrectomy after yeah. you have the lens in. Okay. And what are you thinking for lens choices here? Single piece in the sulcus? No. Try <laughs> 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 to see if they're awake. Yeah. Give so us a heart attack. I would put a three piece in. You have a beautiful, in the sulcus, and you have a beautiful anterior capsorexis, and then optic capture. Yep. 
And that way you don't even have to worry about changing your IOL power choice because you're basically in the same plane you would have been if you went into the bag. Although you may have to change if you're doing because, like for yeah, a single piece to a three piece, they may yeah, have a different eight console. Depends. But you're right, the, the lens yeah. position is the same if you've optic captured it there. Now, if you were, this was a, I don't have time, so I can't say what I want to say, but if this was a Torque or something like that, I wouldn't put a multifocal in, but you could capture it in those flaps too. Sometimes they're pretty stable. And you okay. can put a three piece in the bag with the haptics in those flaps. That's a great point. So here I'm going to actually put in more viscoelastic. I'm just kind of buying time while they open the lens for me. I'm going to take your advice. I think this patient doesn't need an anterior vitrectomy. I think the hyaluric face intact. I'm a little worried that I'm keep, I keep injecting more and more viscoelastic in the eye, but I suppose it'll be okay. So we talked about the lens choice. I'm going to follow your lead too. Three-piece lens, haptics in the sulcus, and the optic captured behind the rectus. And I think that's going to be a really nice approach because it'll give a good barrier effect. It's going to be super stable for the rest of the patient's life. Now, you were talking about B, that you could actually do if it was a, a toric-type lens or a or trifocal EDOF lens. Tell me about that. You could put your haptics. You really have to be... I would discharge the lens into the anterior segment and then use a second instrument to put the haptics and lay them in those areas of split. So not where the split is, but into the pockets. That so are nine still degrees there. away yeah, from where the split is. Where the split is, and you can have it sit there. But your best choice here, if it's not a premium lens, is to put, a, I think, a three piece in the sulcus with an optic capture. It's the easiest choice to use, and then you can deal with an LRI if you've got uh, something to do, or you can do something later on if you couldn't put a toric in. Just so depends. you agree, DP? Yeah, I, I would just put a, a three piece in the sulcus and optic capture. Yeah, yeah I think it's the easiest it's, choice. It's here. like, you know, you just, I don't know if you know how stable those flops would be. It's a great technique, but your, you, you know, your posterior capsule rupture was huge. Right. So in this case, it was going to be for a T3 torque lens, about a diopter sill. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I'm going to follow your advice. Three piece lens. I'll do a little LRI at the end here and we'll have a real nice result. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. And boom, there we go. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll slightly enlarge the incision too. So I've realized that I don't need to struggle to get that three piece lens in. No. And if I try to shove the three piece lens in through the smaller um, incision, what ends up happening is I get vitreous prolapse. That's it. So yes. I've learned, make a big incision, it's okay. Here comes the lens, leading haptic going in. Plenty of seats way up in the front, guys, if you want to come sit up here. And so there's the lens. Now get it dialed in, make sure those haptics go in the sulcus. And then there's the optic capture. Beautiful. And yeah, it's gonna, I'm going to be pretty happy here. So now, looks pretty good. Here, another thing is I'll try to seal up the incision first before taking on this glastic. So that as I take out the visco and I come out of the pro, uh, eye with the eye probe, I don't flatten the AC again. I'm just weary of flattening out that AC and letting vitreous come around. And then here, for settings on the IA, I'll just use lower settings, lower flow, a little bit less vacuum, just kind of take my time on this. It always looks pretty if I speed up the video, but in, rea in reality, this is, uh, takes a little bit longer. And so again, there's a really nice optic capture. You can see it behind the rexus. Good, good thing we had a nice rexus here. And this patient had a, just a beautiful outcome. The post-op day one was absolutely happy. Cornea was clear. Refractive target was spot on. Here's some triumph nice. soon alone, just to make sure there's nothing that rhymes with itrius in the front. <laughs> and that looks good. And also help it'll quell inflammation. And at the end here, yeah, I'm gonna do against the rule uh, LRI. So what do you tell this patient post-op? A, you have really bad anatomy and ugly protoplasm. B, why did you move so much? Or see, the capsule is so weak, so we use an alternate lens and it should not have a negative effect on your vision. Or D, the good news is you don't need that YAG capsule on. <laughs> so what, what do you tell them here? That was actually a serious question. What, what do you tell the patient? See, yeah, we tell them C too, but I, I also tell them a little bit of A. <laughs> right? I mean, and think about it, you have a little bit of ugly protein. Well, it wasn't yeah, but, wrong. But with a, why do you think you rupture the capsule here? Because the patient has bad, ugly protoplasm. From, from the posterior capsule, you think it had a focal weakness? Did the patient have previous injections no, or anything? No, nope. no prior injections, nothing else. I think here, perfect was the enemy of good. Yeah. And, um, and you could have used a little bit of viscoelastic to peel that little piece off. So sometimes, you know, there's an old saying saying, don't gild the lily. Sometimes you just got to leave it. And if you put them on a steroid, they would have been okay with that little, little fiber there. Any so audience Q&A, &A, don't be shy, jump up to the mic. You got 51 seconds. You could have then built a yak capsulotomy, now you can't. <laughs>
<laughs> no, but I feel like we polish the posterior capsule pretty aggressively with that polymer tip. I do that all the time. And was so, I too aggressive? But you no, turned it you over. Weren't. That was the problem. You did you have vacuum? I, pr I probably. Oh, so I just squeegee with the polymer tip as opposed to you know trying to grab. But it did but look you like you grabbed a tiny bit of vacuum. I mean, if your tip is up, I typically don't you know vacuum the capsule. I just you know if there's things lifting up, then I'll vacuum that. But the other point that I think is, is an elephant in the room is you left a ton of dispersive viscoelastic yes. behind the lens. So you have to put these patients on some IOP lowering yeah. drug right. afterwards or even Diamox yeah. for right. a while. Totally agree with you. All right, let's go to the next case. 